almost 60,000 pages of internal documents. And in these internal documents, it was very clear that the scientists inside the agency said, we need to test these foods for toxicity, allergenicity, immune response, lower nutrition, and for environmental contamination. Page after page of study, they said, we need. None of this was done. Today, around a third of the soya from the US is genetically altered. And when it gets to the factory, it's mixed together with ordinary soya. And you never know which is which. In precautionary science of genetic engineering, it means one question means one career. You ask one question, you get the answer, and you might or might not be able to publish it, but that's the end of your career. What's, I think, very unique in my case is that I survived. The attack on scientists is very well structured by the biotech industry. It's systematic, it's worldwide, it's very coordinated. It's part of the way that they do business. So anywhere in the world, at any time, if someone finds a problem, they're jumped on. If the problem is really severe, they get jumped on even more. Whenever there's something that comes up that can threaten this biotechnology empire. Companies exist to make money. They don't exist to um, entirely for the public good. They are, exist to, to give profit back to their shareholders. beneficiary of patented genes was the Monsanto Chemical Company with $4.5 billion profit in 2007. In its report to shareholders, Monsanto predicted these profits would double in the next five years to more than $9.5 billion. Hi, is this Tom? Hi, Tom. This is Jeffrey Smith. Uh, you're, you're one of the more than uh, two dozen farmers that gave him a call describing problems with pigs uh, that couldn't get pregnant because of the GM corn, is that right? So, so um, what I may do at another time, I'm, I'm on my cell phone now, but I might actually, after we talk a bit, I might actually email you and tell you exactly what I've written down about what we've talked about to make sure it's accurate. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. So that was good news. He said that he was willing to talk. His cell phone was dying on the battery. And he said, first thing he said was, is my name going to be in the article you're writing? So I had to put him at ease and tell him no. If not, if he didn't want it to be in the article, it wouldn't be in there. Um, that's, that's, the tr that's why we don't have a lot of whistleblowers. The farmers, farmers are not interested. Um, a lot of scientists are scared about it. And that's the whole state of the art right now, where almost all scientists focused on genetically engineered research are funded directly or indirectly by industry. So we're, we're in a very dangerous situation because there's no real, there's no real independent science. The biotech industry says all we're doing is adding a gene into the DNA. It's like a Lego where they snap it into place. But that's very untrue. When the, the single process of insertion can change the natural DNA in many ways that are unpredictable, and they could lead to toxins and allergens and new diseases and antibiotic resistant diseases and nutritional problems. Most of the soy grown in the United States uh, is Monsanto's Roundup Ready soybeans. Where they take the soybeans, and they put into the DNA a gene that allows the plant to be sprayed with Monsanto's Roundup herbicide. 
and it will kill all of the weeds around the plant, but the soybean plant will survive. So 86% of the soybeans in the United States are genetically engineered to withstand Monsanto's herbicide. of science or Frankenstein food. How safe is the new ingredient in your diet? Professor Pushtai's lab is at Scotland's Rowett Institute, one of the leading food research centres in Europe. Scientists here are trying to find out whether long-term consumption of GM foods may affect health. The professor is so concerned about the implications of his discovery, he's decided to publicise his findings early. As a scientist, uh, looking at it and uh, actively working on the field, uh, I find that uh, it's very, very unfair to use uh, our fellow citizens as uh, guinea pigs. It was the first experiment uh, because when we uh, started in 1995, there was not a single publication on uh, uh, the potential or the real effects of gen uh, genetically modified uh, uh, materials with any species, rats, m mice, uh, or humans, even though that the humans were already eating it. This is the same variety of potato, Desiree, that we used for genetic engineering in 1995. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the uh, particular potato variety, which is uh, one of the easiest to genetically engineer. And uh, the point of the whole uh, genetic modification experiment was uh, to protect the potato against aphids, which are one of the major pests in Scotland. Oh, they attack the, the potato, the green parts of the potato. And uh, we observed that uh, that particular lectin which we used, which we uh, took from uh, uh, the snowdrop bulbs, uh, uh, did protect the snowdrop bulbs uh, against uh, all sorts of uh, pest attacks. And we had hoped that if we are take the, 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 that particular gene and transfer it, engineer it into the potatoes, that will uh, also uh, be protecting the potato against insect attacks, which in fact it did. After the animals were killed and dissected, we found out that in comparison with the non-genetically modified potatoes, their internal organs developed differently. Some of the internal organs, such as, for example, the gut, increased in size, even though that the, the rat itself was not growing as fast or some of the other tissues, uh, for example, the liver or the kidneys, were not uh, developing as well as the controls. And the conclusions were, and this is important, they found in those data 36, 36 very highly significant differences between the GM-fed animals uh, and the non-GM fed animals. Philadelphia 
U.S. physicians criticize that after more than 10 years, there are still no long-term studies concerning the consumption of genetic modified food due to the fact that there is no initial experimental data recorded and labeling has not been permitted. So, even though I'm not a scientist, I worked with more than 30 scientists over two years to document the known health risks of genetically engineered foods. And the first part of the book is the documented health risks. And there's 65 different health risks divided into sections. Now, the first one that I chose to highlight within evidence of reactions is Dr. Pustai's work. And the reason why is that our part pointed out that it was basically the process itself of genetic engineering that caused this significant damage. So only the genetically engineered potatoes caused the problem. The rats that were fed the natural potatoes along with the same insecticide did not have the same problems. So his brilliant design showed that it wasn't the insecticide that caused the problems. It was somehow the process of creating the genetically engineered potato. And he used the same process that's used to create the other genetically engineered crops on the market. The rats ate them for more than 100 days, the human equivalent of 10 years. The immune system takes about 10 days to get in top gear. So if we do a short-term trial, uh, we wouldn't have seen the end result. If I had the, 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 uh, the choice, I would certainly not eat it till I see at least comparable experimental evidence which we are producing for are genetically modified potatoes. Those 150 seconds were boom, 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 and, and they got, everybody got the message. Everybody got the message. A, they asked me, would you eat it? I said, no, certainly not the, the GM potatoes we worked on. If, if I could avoid it, I would certainly avoid it. Uh, the, the other uh, piece of the, the message was that, uh, so what to do we want? And I said that what we want is, is to be uh, more testing, more biological testing, and we should not use, and that they got that. Uh, this, is the, this message originated from us, that they should not use our fellow citizens as human guinea pigs.